Hello, in this video we're going to be covering normal distribution. I'm assuming you know what a probability density function which is, which I covered in the previous video. Not that the probability density function with the normal distribution is particularly um, important to know because it's actually very difficult to work with, but it's just the whole idea of continuous the fact that it's a continuous distribution and that when we're talking about continuous distributions it's the area underneath that we're underneath a graph that we're actually interested in not a particular value um, as i've written there the normal distribution is probably the most important distribution in statistics i think you'll see it a lot um, it occurs quite it's because it's symmetrical and it's quite common that you have distributions centered you know where the concentration the mode is you know more in the middle of the distribution it does model quite a bit of data out there um, reasonably so for instance height of this might be height of male population if you kind of look at histograms relative frequency histograms you kind of gradually kind of make the interval smaller you kind of curve out the kind of jaggedness of it and you'll get you may get something close to what we call the normal distribution okay um, and also the other thing it's not really something we're going to cover in the immediate future but we will be covering it on the OCR further maths course um, this thing of the central limit theorem in many ways that's what really makes the normal distribution so powerful because we'll see later that even if a distribution is not normally distributed, if you take a, com a, a sample of that distribution, you take a reasonably large sample, the, the, the distribution of that sample becomes normal distributed, which is probably the most powerful theorem in the whole of stats and one of my favourites in the whole of maths, to be honest. So that's something to look forward to in some time certainly not in the immediate future so the normal distribution is really important we've talked about probability density functions being uh, how we define you know, how we might model normal distributions using curves or whatever there is a probability density function for the for the normal distribution which has two parameters mu which is the mean and small k sigma standard deviation and this is the PDF for it looks pretty freaky well it is it's actually very very difficult to work with and thankfully we don't have to we'll look in a future video at something called the standard normal distribution because what we'll see is that all normal dis distributions can be transformed to the standard normal distribution um, but uh, which makes the uh, we could use this psi uh, fun thing to represent that but again the PDF is pretty complicated um, in fact it's all based on the integration of this function here which by normal algebraic means that we're uh, we're familiar with we can't integrate not but not by our normal algebraic ways there are ways using a jacobian and things at uni university but that involves using limits and limits of infinity and stuff so basically we can't integrate it not not in what our normal techniques uh, you know uh, college um techniques that we've learned algebraic techniques that we've learned so thankfully the calculator the calculator has a function to uh, to integrate but i just want to remind you that the main features of a pdf the area under this thing has to be one okay the area under this has to be one very important every pdf including this one the area has to be one the total probability is equal to one okay so that's really uh, fundamental so we can use calculator to work out the probabilities that something um, within a range um, well, i'll do that in a moment do a few examples but again it's the area uh, underneath that is important here probability that a x is greater than a less than b we don't really mind if the inequality is strict or not here is equal to this area which we could integrate well if we were able to we would integrate but we can't because 
the function is too complicated. We're going to do the calculator at a moment. Okay, but before we do that, I'll do a few examples of that uh, shortly. But before we do that, I just want to talk about the curve itself and some key features that we really ought to know about this curve, uh, the normal distribution and its curve uh, and its properties. Right, first of all, um, I've writ what I've written here is a table of values of, of percentage values. So if you have a normal, this is for the normal distribution with mean, mu and standard deviation sigma. Um, so standard deviation sigma, so therefore variance sigma squared. That's how we write the normal distribution. X is normally distributed with mean mu standard deviation sigma, so therefore variance sigma squared, and it's written like that. So we always kind of write the variance here, and it's often convenient to write it in terms of the standard deviation squared. So for example, if we had this, that has got mean, as a, that defines the normal distribution with mean 20, and standard deviation 2, or variance 4. Okay, so that's uh, how we would, that's, but that's the accepted notation for a normal distribution. And the, there's certain common features here. 68.2% of data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So, in other words, with this particular case, the probability that X lies between 18 and 22 would be equal to 68.2 and the probability that x lies between two standard deviations in this case 16 and 24 is 95.4 and the probability that it's within three standard deviations so that's 14 and 26 is 99.7 probability that's between what that it's four standard deviations away from the mean so that's eight above and eight below the mean 99.994 and five standard deviations between the uh, five standard deviations uh, which would be between 10 and 30 You've virtually got all the data here. I mean, we're, it's actually a hundred percent in terms of all, all one, nearly one. Um, to how many significant figures? One, two, three, four, five, six. You have to go to the seventh significant figure before it's not hundred percent. So, to all intents and purposes. All of the data lies within nine to five uh, standard deviations of the mean. Theoretically, though, from a f pure mathematical point of view, we do have asymptotes. But it's just it just gets so it hugs the kind of thing so quickly, so closely within two standard deviations. You know, it, it won't take you know it won't take many standard. If you by the time you're ten standard deviations, it's absurdly. Uh, how, how small the numbers are outside that, and certainly five even. So it, it does have asymptotes, but essentially, say five standard deviations from the mean pretty well co co covers all of the data. If you go to 10, then it really does to all intents and purposes. Um, much, huge, hardly, tiny, tiny, tiny proportion is less than 5%, is more than 5 standard deviations from the mean, and even less so the further away you go. So you know that you've got asymptotes. The other uh, important thing I want to know before I do an example, a couple of examples, it has a point of inflection, uh, one standard deviation from the mean. So in this case, for these particular numbers that I have here, we'd have our mean 20, and within one standard deviation 22 and 18 there we have a point of inflection so what point of it always one standard deviation either side of the mean 
and standard de uh, sorry uh, point of inflection that's when it starts moving from concave to convex where it starts curving the other way okay kind of like it's initially curving that way and then it's curving that way that's a point of inflection uh, one either side of mean that's always a feature of the normal distribution so key features of course don't forget the symmetry obviously we've got symmetry and we've got uh, asymptotic it does have asymptotes but actually it gets very close to the zero within you know a number of standard deviations to mean within four even you're very close you're only point zero zero six percent for away from covering everything so it's virtually by five it's it really is tiny so it is asymptotic but you're getting most of the data within five by uh, all in practice within five standard deviations of mean we've got symmetry and we've got this point of inflection which is more of a pure mathematical point uh, there that you about the curve that it, there's a point of inflection um, either side uh, one standard deviation either side that's where the curve starts going the other way so those are the key geometric and kind of certain percent arithmetic features of it but i've mentioned earlier we can't really integrate this function going back to that pdf really impossible to integrate so thankfully the calculator does it so let's just do a, do an example let's just think of an example um right let's just write an example in okay so the population and i got the population of females in a country and i'm making this up but i'm trying to make the numbers realistic is x which is normally distributed 165 centimeters standard deviation i don't know what's a reasonable standard deviation of that where would we have 68.2 percent well 150 is quite small isn't it 190 would be a 180 would be quite tall for a female a 68 put for a female population so i'm going to go with 10 a bit i'm making it up of course so uh 10 is the standard deviation say of a particular female population okay so here's some associated questions um so we as i say we can't integrate the pdf because it's too complicated but thankfully the calculator will do this for us so although i haven't said that we don't need it for the first one we really don't because we can use symmetry so don't you don't forget symmetry can save us a lot of time it generally in mathematics but certainly here i like to do diagrams even in the most simple cases getting a habit of doing diagrams because it just gets it into your head um here's the mean is 165 by symmetry we can see that probability that x is greater than one, uh, 165 is equal to 0 0.5 okay the second one we're going either side of the mean here and we got 160 which should be there say and 173 which might be there 173 and 160 and we want to find that area which we if we had a nice pdf for it would integrate but we have to use the appropriate thing on the calculator let's use the correct notation probability that x that uh, x is within uh, lies between 160 and 173 we can include those as well by the way but i better keep it the same as the question it wouldn't make any difference because it's continuous so here we go let's bring up the calculator okay here we go now i better go back to the menu to show you where it is menu and it's the distribution one that we want seven right now you will have uh, hopefully already used binomial and poisson with this uh, calculator um we're now using normal please never ever use normal pd 
What that's telling us, and I don't know why the calculator manufacturers give us these useless functions, but what that tells us is the height of the graph, which is hopeless. It doesn't help us at all. It's the area under the graphs that we're interested in, and so it's normal CD that we want. Uh, please don't argue. I've had students last year, and very, very uh, good students argue with me on that, saying they were getting right answers for certain things. That was coincidence, and you should never use it. There were mathematical reasons for it that I didn't want to go into, and I certainly don't do now. PD is not what we want. Even if it gets the right answers in certain questions, that is because of a mathematical reasoning that I don't want to go into. CD is the thing, so leave number one alone. Okay, hope I said that strongly enough. Normal CD is what we what we need, right? So uh, we want to find the probability it's between one sixty and one seventy three. So press two. The lower uh, number is one sixty. Okay, the upper number is one seven three. Standard deviation, be careful to put the standard deviation in there, not the variance, but in this case it's clear the standard deviation is 10. And the mean is 165. And we have the answer 0 0.2, to four significant figures, 0 0.4796. Okay, so 0 0.4. Seven nine six. Okay, let's go to the third one. So let's draw the diagram. So let's draw the diagram here. We've got uh, normal distribution. Put to use a different colour. We're below the. We've got the mean mean as one six five, and we want the probability of it being less than one five four. Okay, so it's going to be about about fifteen percent, I guess, because it's more. Seventeen percent would be one standard deviation from the mean because it's sixty-eight percent. But so um, we've got we want that put we want that now we've got a slight issue here in that there's no limit lower limit given. But thinking back to what I was saying about the fact that even though it's theoretically never zero, to all practical purposes, once you have five standard deviations or more away, you really are so close to zero, that's good enough. So five standard deviations away, anything below one four, anything below one two five will do. Um, but you don't have to put one two five in. I'm going to put zero in so uh, because it's quicker to type. So. Uh, but you, you put a, you put an unlikely small number. I do have students who insist on putting you know, minus 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 99. Of course, you're going to get the right answer, but why they bother, I don't know. It's so long as it's sufficiently far away. So let's bring the calculator up. Um, so here we go. Menu, 7. Uh, again, as I say, never use PD, always CD. The lower, I'm going to put 0 in. Because that's a long, long way. With ten, you know, one anything below one hundred and eight would be really, really small. But I'm not. Don't have to put exactly one hundred and eight in. Zero is definitely far, far enough away. Um, so we've got a standard deviation. The upper thing one five eight, as I've just already put in. Standard deviation of ten. Mean of one six five equals to 0 0.24 right that's interesting oh it's because it's 50 at 158 not 154 i was expecting you you heard me say earlier on that i expected something less than 17 percent i think i've been saying 154 at some point or thinking 154 that would be less than 17 percent because of the what well, it's more than one standard deviation from the mean but uh, i just got mixed up there so the actual answer is 0 0.42 uh, 0 0.2420 I think let's bring it up again it seems to have a habit of disappearing 2420 yeah to four significant figures okay right so and then finally the next the last one of the of this lot we've got uh, the, it, well this is the same in the opposite direction I see that's where the 154 came in so we want the probability of it being more than 154 so 
the 154 okay 154 is more than one standard deviation away so i'm expecting something like 85 percent simply because of the the fact that i'm more than one standard deviation from the mean so uh so it's 154 um and 154 there and here we've got uh 165 probability that x is greater than 154 again now we need to pick an unlikely large number in and you know we can take our pick but you know five standard deviations away would be 50 on to that's two, 215 i'm going to put something bigger in than that but at the point uh, so we've got menu and the upper limit the the lower limit this time well, let's put normal CD that's normal two. the lower limit this time is our limit that we want because it's more than 154 so that's 154 the upper limit uh, I'm going to put in something unlikely large so let's put 300 in and uh, it's a long long way away from the mean more than five standard deviations away don't have to count that um, and then 10 uh, standard deviation because that's just memorized from before and there you go remember I mentioned that I expected it with when I thought this one was 154 thinking of 154 I said 15% actually here we got one minus that so it's uh, yeah it's 0 0.8643 0 0.8643 is that okay so that's how to work what's called the forward with the forward normal distribution function on the calculator i now want to briefly talk about this uh, other feature on the calculator called the inverse normal distribution uh, and how how that works and how we work with the calculator basically what this does it does the opposite so we have some probability say p and it's important we recognize the inequality is going in this direction so we're never we're not using if we have this side we've got to do one minus um but uh for this what it does it gives us whatever this number is okay so it 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 works backwards and we'll see that in a moment so let's just think of an example there to, that we can do example so now i have redefined uh, uh, Stand, uh, normal distribution with mean 50 and standard deviation 7 okay um, this is okay so this is using uh, the inverse normal distribution function with it now we want the value of a such that and remember the mean here is 50 for this because it's uh, and standard deviation is 7 and we want the, the number there such that it's 0 0.7 here such that this is 0 0.7 that's what we're looking for so let's write out the question again probability that x is less than a equals 0.7 just again i always like to kind of think about what the number might be uh just so that i know that uh, obviously it's got to be more than 50 0.7 that's to, that means it's going to be less than one standard deviation away if it's 0.7 because if it were two standard deviations away it would be um sorry if it were one standard deviation away that would be 68 percent which would mean there was there was only 17 percent on the each tail so i'm expecting it to be less than one standard deviation above so i don't know i'm going for 54 but i don't know i'm just don't expect it to be more than 57 because i know that that would be too big i think okay sometimes you get these kind of little guesses wrong and then you actually think about why it's wrong but i think it's good to have an idea of what what the number should be okay so okay let's bring up the calculator okay so i've already done this one obviously 0 0.7 standard deviation but the standard deviation what is seven variance 49 again you will come across cases where you can, might be in danger of mixing that up mean of 50 
and 53.7 so as i expected as i said i'd expected it to be less than i think i went for 54 i can't remember but anyway i'm happy with that a equals 53.6 okay so that's the first one the second one okay so the second one here we go now notice the because the way the inverse thing is defined with the inequality this way, we really, I say a good diagram will help. We've got 0.64, but it's greater than B, 0.64. So this area here, we want this number B such that this is 0.64. Okay. But it would it not be easier just to do 1 minus 0.64 in there. And that area, therefore, is 0.36. So that's the key number we're going to put in our invoice because in, with the inverse normal always go in that way because of the direction of the inequality, uh, inequality in which the function is defined. So, right, we're nearly done. We'll bring up the calculator one more time. Okay, there we go. Right, so this time we want to just press AC menu. We want 0.36. Okay, and a good thing about this is it remembers the numbers from before, standard deviation 7, mean 50, 47.5. So uh, at this point, I'm a little bit upset that I didn't play the, my usual game. Uh, guess the number because, um, you know, but it is good to see if the number feels reasonable. 47.5, well, it's certainly less than one standard deviation from the mean. It's 2.5 away from the from the mean um, and the standard deviation is seven. So it feels reasonable because if it was a full standard deviation from the mean, it would be 0.17 because of the 68%. So I'll go with it, feels all right. So, okay, we're gonna do one more example. Um, I just occurs to me that I haven't done many contextual examples. The chances are that you're gonna get, you know, given questions with particular distributions and um, and you're given a context. I've made this question up. Um, you probably can tell it's um, it's a little bit dodgy in the sense that, you know, I can't imagine anyone really making up a question about a dog. So where the dog so uh, actually uh, disqualifies 10 percent of its entrance on the basis of being too heavy or light. But it's what came into my head. So we're going with this. Um, and I, for for the, for the dog lo lovers amongst ourselves, I wanted to be clear that this is just off the top of my head, um, and I think this is highly prejudicial. In fact, that you would disqualify any animal or human being on the basis of being too heavy or too light. So let me just put that out there before doing the question. Anyway, so we we're, we're basically it's no big deal. We we're given the mean and the standard deviation. So let's just. Um, write that down let's write solution so we've got it all nice and tidy um so we're given let's just let x be the be the normal distribution with mean 25 and standard deviation 2 or variance 4 okay so mean 25 standard deviation 2 variance 4 right so now the what basically is happening here is we want to find and again, let's do the diagram. The kind of boundaries such that we've got 90% within the, and we know that the mean is equal to 25. Right, going back to just again going to the guess the number 90%, it feels like it's going to be close but less than two standard deviations from the mean. So I'm expecting, fully expecting the numbers here to be less, to something more than 21 here because that would be two standard deviations from the mean and something less than 29 here because that would be two standard deviations from the mean also and we know that that actually includes um, that would actually, two standard deviations from the mean would include 95.4%. So we're expecting something less than that, okay? So let's just uh, find this number here. 
um, we could also find this number here by symmetry because uh, once we find this one we can easily find this one so by we just looking at the diagram we can see that there's going to be five percent either side here so that's 0 0.05 there or and this is 0 0.05 here so all I need to do is find the number a such that um, so we know to find the number a such a probability of x less than a equals to 0 0.05 so a equals 2 all right now let's bring up the calculator uh, right okay so a equals 2 right number 7 we're using inverse normal again and we want the area to be 0 0.05 the standard deviation is 2 and the mean is 25 okay so 21.7 remember as I said I expected it to be greater than 21 well it is so I'm happy so tw a is 21.7 now I could just once I've got a is 21.7 I could easily just uh, just find the difference between 25 and 21.7 and find that um, and add that to 25 however it would be just as quick in this instance to find to just say this bring up the calculator again and then just put 0.95 in and then check using the fact that I've just said so menu 7 0.95 uh, one ooh, no menu 7 and inverse CD and put 0.95 in and we should get that symmetry when we see the answer 28.3 and we can see that's correct b is 28.3 uh, in the answers there so that we better write that out so the range is range required to enter x is going to be greater than 21.7 and less than 28.3 i can put make that inclusive if we want 28.3 right that is it uh, you'll see the note on standard uh, normal distribution uh, which i was going to go on to here i think we've gone on a little bit uh, anyway i will talk about in the next video a standard normal distribution in the following video you will find if any of you look at other videos on this topic that they're using standard normal distribution for these type of questions i've done here that is because in the old days uh, calculators weren't used and they were using tables so the standard normal distribution used to be more of a thing than it is now but we still need to do it for particular types of questions and we still need to know what it is but it's a little bit less important to do it as early as it was so if you're wondering why if you're looking at other videos and wondering why they keep talking about that so early on it's because we now use the calculators have i shown you in this video hopefully that's clear and yeah watch the next video on standard normal distribution thanks bye